If I tell you space, what do you think? Now, if I'm asking you a specific question, if I tell you space, which country comes into your mind? And among the list of countries you are thinking about right now, tell me honestly if there's any African countries. Well, my friend, if your honest answer is no, you are not to be blamed of anything. Space is probably an industry where African government do not focus a lot. You know, this kind of statement might sound like a general statement and it might also sound like it's true, but in reality, it's not 100% accurate. And here's why. In this episode, I'm going to tell you about an amazing African country that continues to make history and I recently made headlines in terms of spatial prowess. I want to talk today about Senegal launching its first satellite into orbit. Welcome to your favorite podcast, Smart, Intellectual, Knowledgeable African Talks. I'm Philippe Sika, and it's a pleasure to be with you. If you're not yet a member of our amazing community of young intellectuals and people who are profoundly passionate of Africa's economic development, you know the drill. Just click on the subscribe button and activate the ring bell so that you don't, sorry, so that you will not miss out on any interesting upcoming episode. And if you are keen, you can also share this episode. You can comment and you can also drop a like if you feel like this episode offered you powerful perspectives. Well, on the 6th of August, 2024, Senegal launched its first nanosatellite into orbit. The satellite was actually launched in California at the Vanderberg, you know, um, launching station owned by SpaceX, which is a private, you know, company operating within the spatial industry. And the company was actually created by Elon Musk with the key objective to offering, you know, perspectives, you know, to other um, actors within the space industry and to also like disrupt and break down the monopoly from NASA. And this is really interesting because thanks to SpaceX, you know, Senegal could actually launch its first satellite at a very, you know, affordable price compared to what might you know, have been the case if they had to actually go through the NASA portal and stuff like that. So the satellite was fully, you know, designed and created by Senegalese engineers with the support and the help of French, um, you know, um, engineers at the Centre Spatial Universitaire de Montpellier. The satellite is called Gaindesat 1A Gainde, which means lion, you know, in the Wolof language. And I think the name is quite beautiful, you know, because we all know the symbolisms of lions, you know, um, in Senegal. So I think the satellite has a very interesting, and I'm very happy that he also ha carries a, an African name compared to like maybe, you know, I'm not going to say anything, but like overall, these are, you know, the, the few information I can share with you about the launch. And let's now take a look at the mission of the satellite. Like why was the, why was the satellite created and why, you know, was it launched, you know, into orbit? Well, as a satellite, I think the key mission of a satellite is to collect and improve the data landscape, you know, to collect and improve like the collection of data within a specific economic sector. And in the Senegalese um, case, you know, Gaindesat 1A was actually launched to help support, you know, and also improve the data collection in terms of, you know, like, um, in terms of um, like climate analysis. So the satellite will help, you know, state agencies, you know, collecting to collect sorry um, better data so that they can they can assess you know the climatic the climate sorry what am I what's what's going on today the climate situation you know um, of the country 
The satellite was also designed to collect and capture data in terms of water. So when I say water, it's a it's a broader spectrum. So it would collect like situation regarding to the level of water in the country, situation that would also help prevent like any uh, likelihood of flood, you know, that kind of stuff. There's also a very interesting aspect uh, with regard to improving the agricultural um, sector because the data, the satellite, sorry, would also help, you know, collect, you know, like day-to-day and up-to-date information on agriculture in terms of like land availability, in terms of also like um, land situation as to the percentage of agricultural land versus the percentage of, you know, like urban land so that it would help, you know, the Ministry of Agriculture, you know, design and draft better policy to to improve, you know, the condition of um, agriculturers, you know, in the country and so on and so forth. So, of course, a project like this is not free, right? You 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 have to you have to invest. So, how much does a project like that, you know, cost? Well, according to the information I gathered, it's um, it costs an estimate of one and a half million euros, which, in my opinion, sounds fair, right? Given the benefit that you may actually uh, get from, you know that kind of technology. And also, like, we also have to, to understand that, you know, like, designing a satellite is very expensive. But with the improvement, you know, made in the spatial industry, you now have the possibility, you know, to invest into nano satellites. And that's one of the reasons why Senegal went, you know, that route, because nano satellites may be smaller than the traditional satellite, but they are also cheaper but like in terms of cutting edge technologies they are also equipped you know of the latest technologies available so they are very powerful they are very you know they are very strong and i think it's a very good alternative if you are an, an emerging nation or developing you know country trying to you know like uh, make any progress also within the spatial industry so if you don't have a, a lot of budget, you know, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a government. But if you really want to, you, you know, make headway in terms of like improving your um, data landscape, I think nano satellites are actually a very affordable and very good route that you you may consider, you know, in, in, in the future. And I think that's one of the of the many reasons that actually led the Senegalese authorities to, you know, to opt for that for, for for that option. So again, the project was not as expensive in my opinion because one and a half million euros for a government and for a country like Senegal, which is the second, um, you know, uh, top performing economy economy. Sorry, in West Africa, I think you know, it's quite good. So I think overall, this is what I wanted to share with you. And I think the last point that I want to make, you know, is that. Uh, this news is really interesting and it's really encouraging for the West African region, especially given the fact that, you know, for the past, you know, couple of months and the past couple of, couple of years, unfortunately, the West African region has been making headlines in a very negative ways. You know, I'm thinking about the political instability and the security threats and crisis, you know, happening in some West African countries. So having a West African nation like Senegal, you know, uh, making headlines for such a groundbreaking um, operation, I think is really um, encouraging. It's really refreshing also, you know, for, for the region. Now, I mean, aside of the good news, I mean, what can we discuss about this, you know? What kind of lesson can we learn? What are the challenges? What are also, you know, the position of some people? Because I, I know some people may think that, well, is it relevant for an African country, you know, to to engage into the special industry while knowing that, you know, um, in terms of like social economies, in terms of, you know, social welfare, some of the citizens may be faring a bit 
a bit a bit bad if I can put it that way. Uh, another question we could ask, you know, ourselves is maybe like, is it worth it, you know, investing one and a half million euros, you know, into a special industry, knowing that we could invest that money into education, into health, into, you know, um, road and infrastructure, public infrastructure building and stuff like that. Well, this is a valid question. And I'm pretty sure as young intellectuals and as people passionate about the development of the African company, this is a question you you are keen, you know, to, 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 to have answers for. So I invite you to listen to the next episode where I'm going to be playing the devil's advocate. You know, I love that. But I mean, in a more serious tone, I will try and also, you know, give you perspectives, you know, when it comes to assessing this kind of, of, of situation and weighing the, the good and, and, and the bad. So thank you for your time. Thank you for listening to Sika Talks, the only platform where strong realities meet powerful perspectives. A bientôt.